Welcome back, everybody. This uh, this episode will be about cleaning up some photos that may or may not be perfect because you have sticks in the way or debris in your wildlife shots. For example, I have this uh, this elk bull elk photo, and just a quick overview. It's at ISO 800. I shot on the Nikon 70 to 200 at f 2.8 at 1 125th of a second. I have already gone through, did my basic edits, nothing too crazy and fancy, put the profile on there. So everything's everything's good on the photo, edit-wise, minus the, uh, the sticks and stuff all over in front of his body here. So an easy way to do this would be to export it into Photoshop, and you can use the clone stamping tool to remove all of this uh, stuff in its way. It's a lot lot easier than you think, and f for me, I have the uh, the Wacom Intuos tablet with the little pen and whatnot. You can do this with your mouse. It's, it just makes it easier for me to use the tablet. It's like 60, 70 bucks on Amazon if you if you wanted it. So to do that, we're in Lightroom right now. So we'll just right click on this, click Edit In, open it in Photoshop 2020. And then you can zoom in just so you got just the elk with all the sticks you're going to remove. And then you can go on the left side over here if you can see my cursor. So it's the clone stamp tool right here. So you got to make sure you click that and you get this circle. So if you just start clicking places you'll get this uh, error. I think it's the command key on Mac. And on PC it would be the, the alt key. So you use the alt key on PC and then Generally, what you want to do is click on either side of the, the, the debris or item you want to remove. So in this case, it'll be the stick. So you, you hit the, the Alt key, and it changes the cursor shape to this target, which means wherever you click, it's going to steal pixels from that area to cover up the stick as you go down. So we'll just uh, we'll do this part right here real quick. So we'll just click on the right side, and then whenever you – let me get my pen here – once you start going down, you can kind of color it in, and the stick just fades away, and it replaces that area with the pixels to the right where you select it. So for the most part, it works pretty good for wildlife and on fur and whatnot. Oh, see, I made a little mistake right there. So you can always do Control-Z, and I'll delete it, go back one step. So let's keep, we'll just keep going up. And you see it shows a little target the plus sign where it's stealing pixels from. So sometimes, like uh, up here, we might have a little problem right here. So like it'll start stealing, and you'll get like this weird line, like right here. That's kind of an unnatural look. So you can just hit Alt again, and go below it, pick a new spot, start filling it in. But as you see, this made it a little bit worse. So what you can do is go above it, and then just come down. So it kind of blends it in and keep doing that. It's kind of a pain, but it's got a better look when you're completed. So we'll go down here to like his little beard area. We'll do the same thing, but uh, this time we'll go below the stick. Because if you go above the stick and you start coloring it in, it'll pull pixels from the original stick. So like if you go here, and then you start filling this in, it looks fine, but if you go down too far, it starts putting a stick further down. So you're really just adding more stick, and that's not what we want. So we'll go back a step with Control Z, and we'll go below the stick to pick a spot, so that as we keep going down, it'll keep filling in from below the stick. And again, we get this little strange line, shall we say, through his fur, which kind of tips you off that there was something edited there with the clone tool to remove the stick. So what you can do is, then you can go back above the stick and kind of brush it in, cover it up a little. That way people are not as wary of what trickery you just tried pulling. It's almost like color. It's almost like a coloring book is what it feels like whenever you're using the pen. So we'll do that here. We'll fix up this line. 
make it look a little more acceptable. And all you really got to do is just keep going all the way down what I just showed. So over here, it gets kind of tricky because you have a little white spot here. It's a little darker down here. So what you can do is start on the, the area with less, less issues. Do the same thing. Just keep moving, working your way down. Which the, the best tip I can give you is steel pixels next to the area that you're editing. So it blends in a little bit better. See, we got this black stuff here because it's pulling pixels from right there. You don't want that. We'll back up a step. There we go. So, oh, accidentally touched. There we go. We'll try and steal pixels right there. Kind of color this in. And then you, if you just want to make this all black to blend in, just click in a black spot. And we'll just reshape the fur area here. A lot of this is a... A lot of trial and error goes into it, but in the long run, it's real helpful. So you got to keep dragging your black from the same spot to get it to work. So we'll go back to this. So like, if you're trying to fill in this hair here, and there's not a whole lot to like fill in for it. So like, one thing you do is you can go over to the front leg, where there's a nice little area of open fur. And then you can start brushing it on over top of all this stuff. It doesn't quite match. But as you keep going, keep going back to the same spot, picking up the same uh, fur pixels and blending it in. And then whenever you get this stuff all done, you can come back to the top and pick up some different fur and blend it in there too. Try to like it look as natural as possible. Then to fill in for the, the darker areas, just pick a spot. It looks semi-similar. It's almost like drawing at this point. And you can also increase the size to make this go a little bit quicker if you have a large area to cover up. But needless to say, this is probably the easiest way to do this if you have a lot of area to fix up. The only thing that's kind of a pain is when you start getting these uh, lighter areas. Like you see, this stick right here would be kind of a pain to edit out, but if you took your time, you could do it. But the stick was like, I'd say six inches in front of the lens. So whenever you're done doing all this, it, it, it'll be time consuming, but if you have a good picture like this with good image quality of the subject, but you always sticks and branches in the way, it'll take probably 30 minutes to an hour to edit it all out to make it look nice. But whenever you're done, I can go back to my library real quick and show you the final result of what I ended up with. It really cleaned it up pretty nicely. And I'd say it's, it's good enough for like social media use and whatnot. I wouldn't, I wouldn't specifically call it print worthy, but it's, it's a lot better than what it was before with all the sticks and stuff in the way. And then whenever you're done, go back to your Photoshop. Whenever you're done there, you can just click File, yeah, Save As. Just save it on your computer. It's because this will be in your, your Lightroom folder in your library. Click Save. No image compression. And we'll call it PC. Click OK. So then if you minimize, go back to your Lightroom. This is uh, the edit you just did in uh, photo, uh, Photoshop. As you can see, wasn't the best example, but got the point through. This takes a lot of trial and error and practice to get it down pat. And uh, anytime you try and do this on a photo, it's going to take time. So when I started doing this with a lot of my bird photos, it, it saved me so much pain and aggravation, especially when you're out shooting and you see like a great shot of like a bird that you want, but you're constantly moving around hoping to find a better angle with less brush in the way. If you can get it down to like one or two sticks, it's like a 10 minute fix in Photoshop and it's, it's worth it. So you don't waste all your day and then the bird flies away then you're not getting a shot. So just get the shot and if it's good enough, take it into Photoshop, clone out the sticks, call it good enough. Hopefully this was helpful for you and you can check out my other videos. Thanks for stopping by.